Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing our early first look at the NFL slate for this coming weekend. Um, again, all we want to do is just take a look at what the early projections look like and then kind of run an early build. Um, and I know that uh, this might not even remotely represent what we do at the end of the week, but I do think it's important uh, to get a sense of what the slate could look like um, uh, as things change and, you know, things as news develops that could change. But I think it's good to get an idea of the context of the slate. Um, so we're going to look at the projections, then we're going to, you know, run a build or whatever, and then we'll see what it kind of looks like. Um, okay. First of all, let's look at some of the totals here. I mean, I'm looking at these, uh, these are the Sabre Sim totals. So 45, 42, 44. Uh, this Bengals one is a 48, kind of an outlier. And Buffalo Houston is 47 or so. And the Arizona San Francisco game is 50. And the Green Bay game is 50. So the, those are the those are the main uh total games. So Green Bay, Rams, um, Houston, Buffalo, Baltimore, Cincinnati, and uh yeah. And then I guess the next bunch would be Indianapolis, Jacksonville. Washington, Cleveland, I guess. And then you have the um, uh, Seattle game. And then a little bit of a drop. Anyway, that's what we imagine uh, this will look like. Before this happens, let me, again, let me just pull up a contest sim so I could at least... have something to run all right um okay but before that let's get into the projections here first um and boy my file is somewhere I promise you that uh where did i put it uh okay that was FanDuel. let's pull up nfl dk projections dk stacks and we'll open it up and see what we got. Okay. So again, we are sorting all these. We'll get back to the stacks in a minute by this sheets value score. And for those of you that remember from last week, remember last week where you had two quarterbacks just kind of standing out over, over everybody else. You had both Jaden Daniels and, um, Kyler Murray with sheets value scores of 66, 67. And the next guy was like 58, 59 uh, here. It's, it's a war. I mean, look at all this. I mean, this is kind of crazy. I mean, there's so little difference between any of these quarterbacks. So uh, needless to say, if you're playing cash, it's going to be a rough day <laughs> to pick the right one. Um, the other thing is that in, in tournaments, you don't want to play anybody that's that chalky. If this is what you're going to be facing, like everybody, you know, projecting pretty much the same as far as my metrics go, at least. Um, now, fortunately, well, or, or unfortunately ownership is pretty efficient. So it kind of follows that idea. You know, if, if the quarterback's going to project pretty close and their ownership is going to be, their ownership is going to be pretty close. Uh, hold on. Let me just one second. Let me just pause this. Um, sorry about that. I forgot where I was going, but as I was saying that the, the, the projections being close means the ownership is probably going to be close also. Um, so as far as running backs go, let's sort. Well, before I do that, sorry. Let me let let me go back to quarterback position. We'll we'll sort by uh points per dollar next and see if there's anything that stands out. No, it's the same thing. Okay. Everybody's pretty close. Daniel Jones, Deshaun Watson. So yeah, I mean, whichever receivers you like, you probably should play their quarterbacks. All right, so let's go back. We'll go to Sheets Value Score, and now we're just gonna do running backs. See what that looks like. Um, so here you do have a big discrepancy. You have Jordan Mason and Kyron Williams, and then an enormous drop to everybody else. 
when it comes to at least ranking this way by sheets value score. So these are going to be pretty popular, I think, for good reason. Um, when you go by points per dollar, that's how you try to access the cheaper ones. Even still, it's Jordan Mason and Kyra Williams. And then Chubba, Chubba Hubbard's a little bit better, but these two guys are really going to absorb like a lot of the ownership. And it looks to be for good reason, you know? Um, so like if you were playing say cash, for example, do I want to try to do this? It's probably stupid to try to do this, but I don't know. Let's see. Let's, let's see. What, let's see what it looks like. First of all, this is my survivor stuff. Let, let's see if we were going to just build a, that's probably now, yeah, you know, let's do it. Let's go to uh, NFL. I mean, it's going to be a cash line, but, but I would start, I guess, with those two running backs, right? So Kyron Williams and Jordan Mason. And I am, imagine just the cheaper of those quarterbacks. So either like Daniel Jones or, or Deshaun Watson. So let's just put Daniel Jones in here. I guess that's the way I would probably start this. Oh, and God forbid, what's his name? Uh, I can tell you right now, if Malik Neighbors is in, then this is going to, I mean, this is going to kind of build itself, but we'll, 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 we'll see. Um, let's go back to the sheet. Okay. Let's look at the receivers now. Um, again, let's resort by sheets value score. And now let's again, go to the uh, positions. And there it is. Malik neighbors, number one. I mean, if he in fact plays. So then a little drop, but then 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 a whole bunch of guys like as as usual, you know Deontay Johnson, Debo Samuel, Nico Gallows, like all these guys. The the guys that are showing up, I can see right away as point per dollar plays are more Jordan Whittington, Cortland Sutton. But here I'll show you. So we resort these by points per dollar, and then again go by position. It looks like, uh, yeah, Jordan Whittington, Deontay Johnson are the two top point per dollar plays, followed by these others. But Malik Neighbors is clearly the the best play here, you know, and especially with Jordan with uh, Daniel Jones, kind of as a good value there. Let's take a look at the injury report right now. Let's see. Uh, he won't participate in practice. That that's oof, that's not good. Well, we'll see. We shall see. And so we are going to have to save money at some point. So probably one of those other cheapo wide receivers will probably make a lot of sense, like Jordan Whittington, maybe. How do you spell that, actually? W-H, Jordan Whittington. And then there was the, the other one, Deontay Johnson. That was a good point per dollar play. Well... Maybe he's he's not even necessarily playing. Oh, let's see what his ankle looks like. Closer to the game time. Let's see uh, any other good point per dollar plays here in receivers to try to build this kind of like cash lineup. Um, Trey Tucker, forty one hundred. All right, so that's that's another one. So if you play Malik Neighbors, Jordan Whittington, and Trey Tucker, then you could probably do make this pretty easy. Now, obviously, you know, doing a run back for the Seattle side is pretty good. You know, like if you can get to Kenneth Walker somehow or one of the one of the Seattle receivers, but that's more for 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 tournaments, not as important for cash. Um, but let's take a look. Let, let's take, we'll, we'll get to the flex in a minute. Let's go back to the tight end position and see what that looks like. Mm. Again, let's resort by sheets value score and 
go back to position and we'll go to tight end. And what does it look like? Ah, not great. I mean, like Jake Ferguson's the best play. Sorting by sheets values. This is a pretty crappy position. Uh, you might want to just punt here, but but if you don't punt, Jake Ferguson is definitely the best. But if you were going to punt, we want to sort by point per dollar instead. Then let's see. And then we're looking at even still Jake Ferguson. So very, very fishy tight end position. Can we afford this? I mean, we can. Put Jake Ferguson in here. This doesn't seem like the right way to play, but this is why I don't. That's why I don't play cash. <laughs> uh, wait, is he not even on the slate? The Jake Ferguson. Is that the problem here? Why do I have Jake Ferguson in my? Am I looking at Fanduel for some reason? Hang on a minute. NFL. Uh, yeah, I was looking at. Sorry about that. Well, let me just do this again. Sorry about this. Let's just go again. Tight ends. And then, yeah, that's what I did. I was in FanDuel. So tight ends, first of all, by sheets value score. Okay. Sorry about this, guys. It's actually a little bit better because Colby Parkinson at 3,700 is actually one of the better plays. I apologize. So these are the five. Parkinson, Bowers. I was wondering what the issue was. Kraft, Kittle, Kincaid. And I'm staring, staring there at, 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 what's his name? Jake Ferguson is not even on the freaking DraftKings slate. Sorry about that. So Colby Parkinson He's he's the best play, and he's also a great point per dollar play. Only issue is is that he's in the same game as as Parkinson, as as uh, what's his name, Whitt uh, Whittingham or whatever his name is. So in cash, I don't know if you want to play both of them together, but but you could certainly play both of them in um, in uh, in GPPs. Um, I wonder who I wonder if you could put the Rams quarterback in there. Stafford with those two guys, boy, oh boy, that that would be kind of gross. But I don't know. Maybe it's not the worst idea in the world. Tucker Craft, nice play as well. So I think that one of these two guys, depending on how you want to how you want to work it, you put in Tucker Craft. And this becomes like kind of pretty easy. We're gonna have a probably a good opportunity for a good flex play. If you if you you know spend down here, and and for example, like if I wanted to, you know, make this a little more tournamenty and played like a run back, on the Seattle side with like Kenneth Walker or something like that, I could probably do it. Um, and you get a little, but listen, a little bit of funky correlation here with Whittington and Tucker Craft, I guess. Um, Trey Tucker, he's getting owned again, huh? Yeah, I mean, what, what are you going to do? Nine targets, six targets, he's 4,100. I mean, you know, it's not bad. Um, We'll get to a good flex thing in a minute, but let, let's let's go to the defense and just see what that's going to look like. Um, Okay. Again, same thing. We'll go to sheets value score, sort, and then we'll go by position. And it looks like the Broncos are the best play by a little bit. Uh, makes sense. And they're only 2,900. Even makes more sense. So let's go by point per dollar. See if that changes anything. I doubt it will. I'm sure they're still going to be the best play. Oops, sorry about that. And then resort. Yep, Broncos again. So Broncos, Panthers, 
you know, and they're getting owned as well. So that's okay. So we'll put in for now, we'll put in Denver. And if you wanted to build like a lineup, just kind of out of nowhere, we'll just put in the Broncos. They got 7,400. I mean, you know, so, I mean, if you want to be at a little tournament, you'll take a look and see what you could do here. You like, you could play DJ Metcalf. You know, which is, I mean, that's, that's, that's not bad. You're leaving 400 on the table. Maybe that's not ideal, but. Or again, if you wanted to, you could turn this whole thing, this Green Bay thing, into kind of a weird stack. You could play S Stafford with, with say, yeah, I don't want to go to tenants there. Well, you're all already getting, actually, I'm sorry, you're also already getting Kyron Williams. That can't be right to play like four guys from the Rams, right? I mean, you could. I mean, you could certainly do it. It's It's cheap enough, but. I think this is probably a better idea. Something like Daniel Jones with Malik Neighbors if he plays. If Malik Neighbors doesn't play, it's, you know, Ole Ole and free, I guess. And then we could run it back with Metcalf rather easily. And if you don't like this, you could trade this in for Colby Parkinson. But I think these two running backs are, are what you really have to do in this, you know, given how well they project. Um, let's take a look and see what Saberson got us. So I did, did build a, uh, well, actually I didn't yet. <laughs> All right. So where was I? Okay. So this was, did I build this yet? Let me just see. Uh, let me just see what I built. I built something. I think I did build 5,000 lineups. Yeah. Um, it's only showing me the top 20, but we can change that. Let's put 150 in here. Um, and I want to look at it before we sim it and then after. So if we look at it before we simmed it, first of all, the highest owned player, I imagine, were Mason and Kyron Williams, and they are at like a million percent owned. As far as stacks go, we'd be getting mostly Green Bay, actually. Interesting. And then San Francisco, Rams. And there you go, 20% Giants. This Giants hookup is going to be, I mean, this is a really big uh, injury news, this Malik Neighbors business. Because um, that game can deliver. and But it can, I really don't think it's going to deliver without Malik Neighbors in the game. So let's, uh, let's hit, let, you know what, let's do it. Let's run a sim. And we'll run it for the Millie maker and see again at this very early stage, boy, this looks like really good. Like look at like, look at this lineup. This is sort of what we could have done also. Like, like you take the Tucker craft and add one of the, one of the stud green Bay guys, or even look at this, look at this lineup. I mean, this lineup, honestly, and this is, this is what sucks about the NFL and DFS. Every lineup like on Wednesday or Thursday looks amazing. Like how cool is this lineup? Jordan Love with all three top receivers with a double run back, Whittingham and Whittingham and, and Kyron Williams. I mean, that's that's like the nuts, sort of. So um, let me just see how this would work. Uh let's go to Saber score contest sim. Okay, let's do this. So if we were gonna sim this, then it would be more on the Jacksonville side. Uh, look at this, like 26% Jacksonville. I guess they're really just taking shots at ownership here. And then as far as exposure goes and the players, it's still Mason and Kyron Williams, but a little bit less so. And a boy, a whole pile of Jordan Whittington and, and Colby Parkinson. So this Rams-Green Bay game, in, in, in a very weird twist, is becoming kind of the key. Kind of the key game, right? I'll tell you who we didn't see any of, Houston, Buffalo, or Baltimore, or Cincinnati, or, you know, and so it's kind of kind of bizarre. Um, but we'll see. But the Green Bay game is one of the bigger totals as well, and the other some really cheap guys that are going to be building for that total. So 
Anyway, that is going to do it for your early look. And uh, we'll be back Sunday morning for final thoughts.